Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So we're here at Resurrection Sunday. Bless the name of Jesus. And those who are streaming online, I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that you will be filled. And I pray that all your desires, all your needs from the Lord will be met. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and He is Lord.
of Jesus. They surely see the songs in another, same version, but in another words. Where they say, Tell you where they lay him. Yes, man. Tell you the story of Jesus. He's a wonderful counselor. He's a prince of peace. He's a mighty Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. He's a wonderful counselor this morning. I don't want to just tell Jesus, tell Jesus how we love him today. Praise God. He lasts a joy to be open for Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of God. Say unto them, they have 
taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they that they. Peter therefore went out and all the disciples, and they were going to the tomb. And they came in and came home together, and the other disciples did come from Peter and came first to the sepulchre. And he so they both ran together and the other And he stopped down and looking in, saw the living clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Then coming Simon Peter following him and, and went, went into the sepulchre and seared the living clothes lying. And a handkerchief was a handkerchief that had been around his head. Not lying with the living cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Then we went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and, and saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he was risen again from the dead. Then the disciples went again unto their own But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping as she went, she stood down and looked into the tomb. And said to the angels in white city, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Welcome, woman, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned her back and saw Jesus standing and knew that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself, and said unto him, Rabbi, which is the same master? We will stop at 17 and then continue after he was. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Praise the name of Jesus. We end the portion of our word until the Lord is the Lord of God. Praise God. Yes, man, Jesus Christ has been risen today. He is alive. There is no one in the tomb. Praise God. And we can rejoice today. We have a life and hope. Yes, our Savior has been risen. Praise God. We know how to welcome the Lord to sin. By our mission, praise God. Bless the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord? Let us give him another praise. The Lord has been good to us, and today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, which brings hope and, you know, good tidings for the church today. And so, as we are here, we want to give God our best praise, we want to give Him our all, because that's what He desires of us. I want to greet all our leaders and members who are here today, our senior pastor, Reverend French, and our pastor, Reverend John Williams. Shall we bless the Lord? Amen. I want to greet our musicians and our moderator for today, Minister, Minister Young. Praise God. And all of our brothers and sisters who are here this morning, we want to give God thanks for you. And we trust that as you come, you will just continue to worship God because He desires all from us. We also want to greet our friends from Facebook as you tune in to the service this morning. And I pray that you will stay the course as there is a word for you. And God is always ready to bless and to do you good. I want to also say to our 
friends and our brethren who are in the lockdown. Yes, and you only have another day to come of it. Let us continue to stay close to the Lord because indeed He desires our all. And as you give to your all, in return, you shall be blessed. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise God. We we'll continue our reading. St. John 20, we we'll read from now verse 18 to 30. Praise God. I read a new follow. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. Then the same day at evening, they being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hand and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sin of any, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now Thomas called the twin of the twelve was not with them. When Jesus came, the other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see his hands and the printing of the nail and put my finger into the print of the nails, I will not believe. And after eight days, the disciples were again inside. And Thomas said to them, Jesus came. And Thomas with them, Jesus came, the door being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here, and look at my hand, and reach your hand there. Then he put into my side. Do not, do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But are those who blessed are those who have not seen, yet they have believed. And, and truly Jesus did many other signs in the appearance of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Which, but I, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you have, 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 may have life in Him. In His name, praise God. Bless the name of Jesus. Here is a portion of God, Holy Word. We honor thy saying. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. In Jesus' mighty name, praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise God. Before our oh, host here come with the message, we will sing again.
and he says to us, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Praise the Lord. I want to just greet everyone again in the mighty name of Jesus. I particularly want to greet our viewers online because sometimes our viewers don't always stay on one, one channel. They visit different services during the time and, uh, you know, at, at different intervals, they are on this page or they are on another page. But I want to give God thanks for you today because there's so much different sites that you could be on, but you choose to stop by with the Model Church of God, and for that we give you praise. I especially want to greet my members who are here from our branch churches and the headquarters. It's always good to know that you are tuning in and keeping in touch with what is happening in our sanctuary. Shall we bless the Lord? And so as we look at these two verses today, they are not talking about the Resurrection Sunday. This is a discourse between Martha and Jesus. And Martha is the sister of Lazarus. Lazarus was dead and was buried. And now Jesus turned up on the scene. And this shows us as we listen to this encounter that Jesus, he has the power over life and he has the power over death. Hallelujah. He also has the power to forgive sins. So we have a good God to serve. Hallelujah. And he is the creator of life. As he said in St. John 14, verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And he who lives, he who um, has life, he is life by himself. He can surely restore life. And so as he stood in the company of Martha, he wanted her to know that he is a restorer of life. If you're going through your situation today, I want to declare that Jesus is a restorer of life because of the resurrected power that dwells within him. Praise the Lord. And those who believe in Christ, they have spiritual life over that. Praise God. And this is what God gives to us today. All believers has this wonderful assurance and certainty in Christ. Yes, because in St. John 14 verse 9, the word of God says, because I live, he shall live also. So I'm really glad for this discourse between Jesus and Martha. So Martha was the sister who was always busy, always busy um, taking care of domestic affairs. Didn't have much time to sit at the feet of Jesus. But here we see in this encounter that she is a woman of deep faith. She knew something about the second coming of Christ. Hallelujah. And she gave that response as we see in verse 27 of St. John chapter 11. A response that Jesus is looking for from us today. She said unto Jesus, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Now as we reflect on these two verses, or three verses as I've read, I want us to pay attention to three different sets of relationship. One is the relationship with Mary, uh, Martha's relationship to Christ. From the scripture, we know that Jesus was a friend to Lazarus and his family. So Jesus would have been a friend to Martha as well. There was a connection there and a friendship. And Jesus, um, Martha, she had this faith in Jesus that although her brother was buried for four days, she said to him in verse 22 of that same text, text but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. You hear her faith coming alive? 
grace God, the busy woman who we would think didn't spend enough time in the Lord, she had this day coming alive. She knew that Jesus, where Jesus' source of power was, praise God, and she believed that God has the power to do whatever. Some of us are in Christ for a long time, but we cannot speak with such things. God is calling us to come up closer to a relationship with him where we can stand on his promises, where we can declare his truth to all generations. Hallelujah. Oh, we are not going to get the better of us, but God is calling us to the state of belief where we can come closer and understand him in all his fullness. So Martha had a relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. But she did not even understand his resurrected power that he had. Praise God. And she thought that her brother would rise on the last day. But Jesus was about to give her an even now encounter. Praise God. Give her an even now encounter. She was asking for it. But she didn't believe that it would come now. It would come sometime at the second coming of Jesus. But Jesus was able to give her that which she has declared through her faith. Shall we bless the Lord? Many times we declare things but we don't believe it. So she said, I know that even now, whatever you ask of the Father, he will do it. But yet she was waiting for this resurrection to take place on the last day. But Jesus, that good Savior, he was able to give her that which she asked. Praise God. The second relationship we want to look at is the believer's relationship. Our relationship. Those who are in Christ. Praise God. Those who believe in Christ will live. That's what the word of God says. Even though we die one day, we shall live. Our spirit remains alive in Christ. Praise God. And all our loved ones and the patriarchs of the different churches, those who have labored for Christ, they are not dead. They are only asleep. They are alive in Christ. And those of us who are alive and still in the land of the living, as you believe in Jesus, you will never die. Believers, we have a hope. We have a hope in Christ. Our relationship with this resurrection and the life which is Jesus Christ, this gives us a lively hope. Shall we praise his name? But there is another relationship. This is the relationship of the unbeliever. They do not have the relationship with this resurrection and life. So their relationship is connected to the wrong source. And the word says that the belief, the unbelievers, they are physically dead and they will remain dead. The unbelievers, they deny themselves of having life in Christ. Praise God. And those who are alive and are in the land of the living, you are also spiritually dead. Until you come to this place where you can believe. The unbelievers can only come alive by believing in the resurrection and the life, which is Jesus himself. The unbelievers does not have a relationship with Christ. Their relationship is with a wrong source. Praise God. And they are outside of the ultimate plan that Jesus has for man. Now, as we think about these relationships, and as we think about Jesus being the resurrection and the life, let us reflect on his resurrection. Jesus showed us that he had the power as he raised Lazarus from the dead. And in many of the scriptures from the gospel, we saw where he proclaimed that he will tear the temple down and he will build it back in three days. St. John 2, verse 18 to 19. And when Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary went to Jesus' tomb, they found it empty. And the angel said to them in Matthew 28, verse 6, He is not here. He is risen. He said, come see the place where the Lord lay. So this is the resurrected power we're talking about. Jesus 
Jesus who represents the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. And Jesus' resurrection means much for the church. So much so that Paul challenged the brethren in Corinth and in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 for them to understand about the importance of this resurrection. Praise God. And I'm not going to get into that aspect because that's a whole day of preaching by itself. But I want to zero in on a few of the benefits that comes from having relationship with this resurrected Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, he is the resurrection and the life. But when, when you are connected to him, what does it bring to you? What, but why should we get connected to this relationship with him? The first is that as believers, you will never die. So John 11 verse 26. We want to live forever. Praise God. We want to live in the life after death. Hallelujah. We want to reign with Jesus eternally. And so we must maintain our relationship with him. And for us to have this relationship, it calls for our belief. Praise God. The second benefit is that the spirit that, that raised Jesus from the dead also dwells within our body. Romans 8 verse 11 And he that raised the Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So I'm glad that Jesus ar arise from the dead. So today I have hope and today I can celebrate that that resurrected power dwells within me. So don't take me lightly. Don't think that I'm a walk over. The spirit of the Lord dwells within my heart. Shall we praise the Lord? And every believer, you have this opportunity to have the Spirit of God living within you. And you can manifest the Spirit. And you can go forward and conquer because greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. The third benefit, and I have three sub-points to that, is that we can speak life over our dead situations. Because the power that raised Jesus from the dead lives within us, Sister Juliet. All when the thing seems like a bone, we can command that flesh will come on it. Praise God. Because the Spirit gives us that power that we can speak, hallelujah, and call the things that are not as though they were. Romans 4, verse 17. So things that are hopeless, Things that look impossible. We can call them as though they are. Hallelujah. And also, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. You see, when you are attempting any plan, any mission, and you begin to say that you can't do it, you are already setting yourself for defeat. But when you say that I can do all things through Christ, then you are making it possible and making it easier for you to overcome. Hallelujah. And that's the spirit we need. When you have a relationship with the resurrection and the life, things that seem impossible, you speak, oh, and you command them to come into possibility because that's what God is able to do. So that's Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. And the third thing about speaking things into life is that by his stripes we are healed. Second Peter 2 verse 24. We realize that so many sicknesses around us. So many persons are becoming sick. Some people look so fresh and strong and when you listen to their complaint, they have various underlying conditions. So on the outside they look like all is well, but they are going through great pain and suffering. But I want to declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. And when we believe in this resurrected power, we must declare it over our bodies. We must stand upon this assurance that we are healed. Glory to God. The enemy will want to tell us otherwise. And the doctors will give you diagnoses that are outside of what you're going through. And that will cause you to even have other conditions. But I want to declare that by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So no matter when you get wrong prescription, no matter when there is wrong diagnosis, 
diagnosis. You are healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we need to believe that and lift, lift up our faith and claim our healing because healing is the children's bread. A songwriter says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I can face my sickness. I can face my pain. I can face my disappointment. Because he lives, all my fears are gone. So I stand with confidence. I stand under the authority of the Spirit of God. I stand with the boldness that the Spirit of God dwells within me. Hallelujah. And because I know who holds the future, my life is worth a living. We're in a time when people seem like their life not have no value. Man will kill woman and kill themselves. Hallelujah. But God is saying today, I have a reason for you. And because he lives, your life is worth a living. Will you come and have a relationship with Christ? This is what means will mean much to you today. And this is what will help you to press on amidst your struggle, amidst your testing. When you have a relationship with Christ, it makes a difference. I want to challenge someone to get this relationship. This relationship with Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Don't wait too long. Another songwriter says to us, have you answered God's question for your final destiny? Have you made your reservation for eternity? It matters not if you're young or strong, because that's what we say all the time, you know, and think that we're not ready for Jesus yet. Me too young, me too strong. But his word said, young man, I call unto you because you are strong. A strong people God wants for his kingdom. A people in that young, fresh youth, that's the person God wants because he desires glory. And he wants all, hallelujah, and he wants the best. And in fact, he deserves it. Praise God. So don't wait till you pop down and mash up. Then you want to have a relationship with him. He will still accept you then. But he's calling you now. Now is the day of salvation. And the songwriter went on to say, you're going to need God's helping hand. No matter if you're rich or you're poor. You're going to need someone to help you. You're going to need someone to guide you. You're going to need someone to lead you home. Why Jesus returned. And if you don't understand or don't even realize, he repeated, that's why Jesus returned from the valley of the shadow of him. Why won't you let him? Why won't you let him? Why won't you let him hold your hand and lead the way? Some of us, we are, we are trying to lead our lives for ourselves. But I want to challenge you that when you get that relationship with the resurrected when the resurrected power gives life, your circumstances will be different. Shall we bless the Lord? As we reflect on Jesus' resurrection, may we solidify our belief in him today. May we activate the power that is within us. Hallelujah. Begin to speak life over our situation. Ah, when people want to tell you that the situations are hopeless, you rebuke them. Because words have life and power. Hallelujah. And life and death is in the power of the tongue. So sometimes when you hear people are speak negativity over your life, you've got to speak and renounce it and destroy it through the blood of Jesus Christ. Begin to speak life over your children. Begin to speak life over the nation. Ah, so many cry that the government now do what they must do. And we are speaking so much negativity over our country. But we are declaring that there is hope for Jamaica. We are declaring that in due time, God will turn it around. Hallelujah. We declare life over our community. And though we see people living in sin and it seems hard to surrender to the Lord, we are declaring that this community belongs to Jesus. Every, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, you belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So don't you want to play where you are? Don't you want to be stubborn? Don't you want to harden your heart and sit on your neck and declare in Jesus over this community, over the communities where the church shares the gospel, over every believer who listens to the word today, where they're declaring life, where they're changes because God is with
with us today. Whatever your circumstances, whatever you're facing in your life today, begin to speak with that resurrected power because Jesus has given it unto you. A relationship with Christ is one worth living. Seek for a closer, deeper, and stronger relationship with him. Every day with Jesus must be sweeter than the day before. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to seek after as we draw closer and closer to him. In Acts 17 verse 28, the word of God says, For in him we live and move and have our being. So it's important for us to have this relationship. It's one that gives us life. It's one that helps us to move into different direction. And it is one that helps us to survive in this time. Praise God. God is calling for true believers. God is calling not just for the martyrs who believe that he will come and he will resurrect us in the second coming. He is also calling for the believers who believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. One who raised from the dead. One who can raise us out of sinfulness and bring us into his marvelous righteousness. The one who can give us the even now experiences because he's a miracle working God. So on this resurrected morning, it is symbolic for me that I can see changes in my situation. And I speak life over every condition that the enemy has set up. Oh, to present it as death experiences, oh, hopelessness and disappointment. I speak life over them this morning. Because of Jesus, he conquered death, hell and the grave. And he conquered that for my victory. And I, I am celebrating victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The risen lamb will take it away the sins of the earth. He's with us this morning. May we behold this lamb. He wants to have a connection with us today. Will you respond to him? A songwriter says, I've heard of Christians long ago. They were brought before a tyrant's throne. They were told that he would spare their lives if they would renounce the name of Jesus Christ. But one by one, they chose to die. You see, when you have a relationship with God, when you believe in this resurrected Christ, you're not going to sell out. You're not going to give up. You're going to be willing to face that. Hallelujah. And one by one, they chose to die. The Son of God, they would not deny. Like a great angelic choir sings, I can almost hear their voices ring. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. How many of you, if you listen today, are willing to pledge allegiance to this Lamb? Behold him this morning. Pledge your allegiance to him with all your strength, with all and seek to honor his command. Pledge your allegiance to the Lamb. We pledge allegiance to so many things. To our loved ones, to our family. Hallelujah. To our money, to our material things that we have accomplished. We pledge allegiance to our brilliance and the skills that we have. But we need to let go of those things and begin to pledge allegiance to the Lamb. For in Him we live and move and have our being. May the Lord bless you on this resurrected day that you will make it important in drawing closer to Him and continue your relationship with Him. Because a relationship with the resurrected power, with the resurrection and the life will give you a new experience, will change things that seems impossible and give you hope for the future. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let somebody say amen. amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And as we close in prayer, minister, I want you to remember the Williams family and the Dawkins family as they go, and the Swaley family as they go through this time of mourning. God bless you in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord.
send in Jesus. Oh God, we declare that you are God in our midst this morning. You are no longer in the grave. You have brought salvation to mankind. Death could not hold you. The dark domain could not keep you because you are light, the glorious light. And light, oh, darkness just cannot oh, supersede or overcome the light. We thank you this morning, Father, that you are the light in our souls. Ah, indeed, Isaiah prophesied that you are everlasting, Father. And because you are everlasting, Father, your death and resurrection has brought many sons to you. Oh, God, fulfilling that prophecy that you are a father to us. So, Jesus, we thank you for being a good, good father. We thank you that in you there is life. Oh, eternal life. We thank you that you are the resurrection and you are life indeed. And we thank you today that you have brought a relationship through your, your resurrection. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, that whatever we need today, we can have. Because when you rose from the, from the dead, you brought victory and success. You brought all the things that we can ever need, oh, God, into our lives as we have come to believe in you. So we thank you for your words this morning. We thank you that your words, they are life and they are light. Oh, your words, they are food to our souls. We thank you this morning that because of the written word, we have hope this morning. And the church has hope that one day we shall reign with our eternal Father. We have the victory today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, because of your resurrection, we know that whatever our problems are, whatever the storm Wait. 
people rejoice in you. Lord, and as the, the musicians accompany the, the, the songs of, with, with their instruments, I pray that you will anoint those instruments again and anoint them afresh, mighty God. And may they always play skillfully, oh God, as they work for you. Father, I pray for all the others who are here today, Brother Ryan and Sister Juliet, uh, Sister Berlin, Almighty God, and all of uh, uh, Sister Ferran and Brother Raj. Lord, I just put them in your hands today. Take full control, mighty God, and lead your people today. Father, on this resurrection day as the church celebrates, oh God, I bring to you the, 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 the Dawkins family, the Suebe family. Oh God, I bring all those who are connected to this uh, son of the late Mother Wallace who has passed. The Lord, you know what they are experiencing. You know what they are going through. But I'm so glad that you're acquainted with grief. Oh my God, the scripture today, in the scripture it says that when you saw the tomb of Lazarus, you wept. Oh God, you bawled out. Oh my God, when you saw that your friend died. And so I'm glad that you understand the grief today. And you know where your people are. You know what's going through their minds. Lord, you know the anguish. Oh God, you know the suffering. You know the pain. You know all the things that they remember. All the memories, God. I So I pray that you will attend to them today. Oh God, you are the omniscient God who knows everything. I don't know everything that they are going through today. Except that they are grieving. But I'm glad that you know. You know every heart. You know what they and what they cannot even express. Meet those needs today, Almighty God. Bring comfort to the families, I pray. Oh God, bring joy and peace to their hearts. Help them to know that on this resurrection Sunday, that they can indeed rejoice, even though they are in grief. Lord, help them to know that you will never leave them nor forsake them, that you are a good, good father, and that you love them dearly. I give them to you today. And I pray, oh God, that for whatever they will need during this time of bereavement, that you will supply it in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for all those who are watching today, and all those who have heard your words. You know the hearts, oh God, that have, been, have responded. You know the hearts, Lord, that have clung to the word of God today. I pray, Almighty God, that your Holy Spirit will continue, oh God, to give power to the word that they have heard, and that they will hold on to it, Lord. Oh God, and some soul will cry out today. Some soul will be today, oh God, somebody will find Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, just continue to lift up your church universally, the church across the world. Oh God, I pray against every evil in this nation. Oh my God, I pray against every every immorality, every, every negative thing. Oh my God, I pray against every negative word that has been spoken over our nation. Oh my God, I pray that our, our nation, Jamaica, we will call our walls salvation. We will call our gates praise. That Jamaica will come back from denigration. Oh, that Jamaica will come back from apostasy. That Jamaica will come back from sin and dead works and unrighteousness and evil and murder. Oh, God, that Jamaica will come back from hatred. That Jamaica will come back, oh, from killing our young ones and our women. Oh, God, that the hopelessness that is felt in this nation, oh, God, on this resurrection day, mighty God, many souls will be redeemed because we are redeemed with your precious blood. In the name of Jesus, I pray for peace over this nation. You are indeed our shalom. Oh, God, you are the peace when you, oh, God, turn up in the, in the, in the place where your disciples were after you were resurrected. The first thing you greeted them with was peace. So I pray, God, that peace will come on Jamaica today. And look at everyone who are listening, everyone listening today to the word and to this service, that they will experience peace. For you are our Jehovah Shalom. You are the peace giver. And you are the peace speaker. Oh God, and there's peace in you. Oh mighty God, help 
us today, Lord, as we go, one from another, may your love and grace and mercy and truth and light follow us, run us down. May goodness and mercy follow after us. Oh, mighty God, may your fire encircle us. Oh, Jesus, may your light continue to shine upon us, Father. Oh, God, may you keep us back from diseases and distresses and, 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 and per, perplex, perplexities and trials and adversities. God, may you keep us back, oh, God, from the things that the enemy would have sown. But today is the triumph of the church, resurrection day. Oh, God, we have the victory in the name of Jesus. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you that the church has hope today. Yes, Lord, there's hope in King Jesus. Oh, there's hope, and we don't have to be afraid. You have given us power, hey, God, and you have given us sound mind. Yes, Lord, and we exalt you today. We rejoice in the power of the resurrection today. We rejoice in who you are today, that you are our God, and we shall not be disappointed, for you are the God who comforts. You are the God who loves dearly. And you are the God who redeems and restores us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.